I've lived in this area nearly all my life in a local village called Abanant. I was involved in farming most of my life. Now we've just brought this small hold in. It's been my ambition all my life to own a farm of my own. And um, about five months ago, this small holding, about 30 acres, come up. So this has been my ambition to, to be on the land and to be farming. We've always had um, good farm dogs. My father before always had a good farm dog. My father's farm was considerably bigger than this. And uh, it was long distances to gather sheep. So we always had to have a good farm dog, yes. I just progressed from there, really. Went down to see trials in the local village about 17 years ago and um, I knew all the committee and everybody in the local community gathered there really and I went there and being interested in dogs I decided I must have a go at this. There was about 12 dogs running the local class, basically farmers and I managed to win it and from then on I was competing in the Open the following year. Glynn's never looked back since then and now takes great pleasure in training his own dogs. I love training. It's the most relaxing thing for me that I can think of, to be honest. It's just a hobby, really. But we still have to have a dog to work, so it's much easier to work with a good one than a bad one. You know, I work full-time, but uh, I never had holidays. I just take my holidays to go a day here and a day there to trials. So, basically, it's all involved around trialling. Um, we keep a few beagles and a few terriers, but no, no other hobbies otherwise at all. I've got three children, uh, Melanie, my daughter, who's 18. I've got Wayne, who's 21, and another boy, Philip, who's 16. The two boys, so they're mad on farming and, you know, they're working, but every spare minute they've got of their time, they're up helping, they're out in the mornings doing whatever. My daughter works full-time in Carmarthen, so, you know, she comes up on weekends and when she's got time, of course, but uh, not as much interest as the boys. The boys aren't into trialling yet either, but they support Glyn and the dog he's running today is eight-year-old Cass. She's smoothed out. She was quite sharp once and, and too keen, but she's really, she's smoother now and nicer on her sheep. Uh, her temperament is beautiful. As far as trials, no sheep, no crowd, nothing upset her. I was in the Royal Welsh uh, last year, walking through the middle of thousands of people and she didn't flinch as if she was at every day on the farm. I've got another dog, Jock, who's uh, been in the international a few occasions. Uh, I've got a couple of daughters of him who are hopefully will take over next year, because this will be Cass's last year, I think. <whistles> as far as trialling, she'll be working every day on the farm, but hopefully I'll manage to retire her this year if I get something to replace her. In a couple of years' time, if something bigger comes along, we'll have a bigger farm and uh, have a full-time job farming. I think it's everybody's ambition to win the international one day, I should imagine. Hopefully one day my turn will come. Glyn Howells has done very well in international competitions with his two dogs, Jock and Cass. Today he's running Cass, a very stylish bitch. If they were to win this heat, we could end up with Cass competing against her son Jim, last week's Scottish heat winner with Bobby DL, in the first of the semi-finals. Well, the sheep are coming to the post, they look rather lively. And the shepherds will be trying to settle them. That's better. Cass is set to go to the right, and away she goes. Giving nice room as she goes past the end of the drive gates, right down the field, starting to come in. Two points off the outrun, and one point off the lift, but she's giving ground. She's almost up to the perimeter fence and the sheep are going to miss the fetch gates by a good 40 yards. She's got to get in contact with the sheep, get them back onto line. Still not quite on line, they've been off all the way down the fetch, it'll be a lot of points lost. But she's in contention with them now. It'll be interesting to see how the judges mark this fetch. And they're not quite on line yet, they're challenging the dog. <whistles> She's got them going again. Well, only eight points out of 20 for the fetch. <whistles> and the sheep are swinging right and now to the left. Cass is covering, but the line's bad. She's 
turning the men. Get up. They're going through as long as they don't come back again now. They're safely through. But the first leg of the drive wasn't very straight. They'll have to make up whatever ground he can now. They're on line, but they're travelling fast. She's quite fast, though. She'll cover them. They've now gone a little bit too low in the field. They need to be nearer towards Glen, but they're gaining speed now, and they're coming off towards the right. Cash is a long way back. I don't think she's going to make it. I think they're going to go off on the top side. He's bringing her around as fast as he can. Will she make it? Well, that was close. But he's still got to get them through the obstacle yet. He's got to pull her right the way back, turn them in, and now he's got to try and salvage what's left of a bad turn because they've gone very, very high up the field. She's giving a little bit of ground again. Kerry knows exactly what it's like here. She had a wide turn at this point. And the sheep have been offline all the way back to the Maltese Cross. And Cass just waiting. And the sheep coming towards the cross. But only 22 points out of 30 for the driving. They still need pushing towards the mouth. There's one starting to go in. Will the others follow? Cass is well back. Two in. The other five following. Well, there's no sign of flightiness now. I'm just turning uphill a little bit. Cass could put that little bit more power, that little bit more authority onto the sheep. She's allowing them to bend a little bit too much. Down there, light down. Light down. And she's bringing them now down towards the sawdust ring. Get up, Cass. Get up, Cass. But the judges have awarded full marks for the Maltese Cross. And the sheep are now nicely in the centre of the sawdust ring. But the collared sheep look as if they're in the centre as well. They need to be one from either end. One in the middle, one on the left. Then walking round. He's got one on the top side now. Bringing her further on to the end. Cass is looking at her now, but there's two together, so that won't do. They've got to stay within the sawdust ring. He's moving her about. Very pliable at this point, and he's working well. Stand there. Stand there. Where it counts for Stand teamwork. There. He's got her on the end again. Can he encourage her off? He's walking there. one off now. Will she come in? Yes, Stand taken. There. But whilst the judges have accepted it, it may not be clean. Because Glyn did most of the work there. He made the gap. Cass was still lying down. And he walked the sheep off. So he could maybe lose a point, he has done, he's lost one point out of the possible ten and the sheep are now on the way to the pen nice and steady waiting for the sheep now to come into the mouth a little bit of defiance on the part of the sheep. Cass coming up very carefully, bending to the left, covering her side. One looking at her again. Could be a challenge, but they've accepted her. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. And that's it. Lay down. That completes the course. Well, the crowd certainly appreciated the run. It's full points for the pen, but Cass gave too much room on the fetch and she should have had better lines on the drive. It gives Glenn a total of 86 points. It's another run I thought would have reached a higher standard. Glenn's gone into the lead, 
but it may not be good enough to stay there. Clint, yeah. bad luck. Yes. Really. You, you had uh, galloping sheep to start Well, they, they had a bumper start, to be honest with you, and, and they were drawing up to uh, one side of the course. And uh, before the bitch could get up, she was behind the bank. Before she could get up to turn them back, they passed the fetch. So not a good start. And so there was absolutely no chance of getting no, them through the fetch. No, gates. for some reason she went out quiet enough. She seemed to lift them quiet enough, but they took off and no chance. Again, you had problems in the shedding ring, but yes. you were patient and mm. you got her in the end. Mm. Being they were wild in the beginning of the run, uh, she had to beat them to boss them, to get them together, to try and cool them down again. And after doing that, then they're much harder to shed because she's beat them and put them together. So uh, they're harder to get one out then at that time, after you beat one. Were you mm. tempted to hike one out with your crook? Uh, a lot of things went through my mind once or twice there, <laughs> yes, but uh, <laughs> we won't mention that. No. And then a lovely pen. Yes, yes, good, uh, good finish, but uh, not such a good start. Well, I don't think it was your fault. I no. think we blame those bits of mutton over there. There we are. Yeah, well okay. done, Glenn. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.